Uh, hi everybody, this is Mr. Johnstone, and I want to show you our experiment that we did with the dialysis bags. This is the mini lab uh, part of our uh, cell membrane unit. And so let me show you what's here. This is kind of the expedited version, so you don't actually have to do the lab. So people who did the lab uh, took our dialysis tubing, which is this plastic tube, and cinched the ends shut and put some fluid in there so that we can actually make a sort of a makeshift cell. Now what's in this bag is this solution that's right here, and this says starch and glucose solution. So what's in the bag is starch and glucose and, of course, water. And so when we did that, we just put it in a beaker of pure water or distilled water. And then we added a few drops of iodine. Now, iodine is an indicator for starch. So we just put it in the beaker like this. And it turns the water a little bit of a yellow color. Now, when iodine and starch come in contact with each other, they turn sort of a dark purple. And so we can take a look at some of the ones that have been sitting in the water here. And you can see that um, down at the bottom of the bag here, the bottom of the cell, it's kind of that dark purple and brown color. That means that the iodine from the beaker water went into the cell, into the water that's inside the cell, and contacted the starch and turned it that dark color. So we know that iodine molecules went into this cell. And of course, this lab is all about what goes in and out of our cell. Um, now, the cell uh, also has glucose in it, and so to evaluate whether the glucose came out of the bag and went into its environment or into the beaker water, we had to sample the beaker water for glucose and test for glucose, and that's exactly what we did. So uh, over here, I have our test for glucose, um, and remember, um, with this test, a yellow, orange, or red color is a positive test for glucose. So in this case, we have a positive test for glucose in the beaker water. So that means that glucose went out of the bag and went into the beaker water. Um, so to summarize so far, the iodine went in and turned the starch black and the glucose came out. Now if the starch had come out of the bag into the beaker water, there would be starch down here at the bottom of the beaker because it would have settled out and it would be that dark color. Um, but that is not the case. There is no starch in this beaker. So the starch didn't go anywhere. The starch stayed in the bag or in our uh, sort of simulated cell here. Now we also weighed the bag, the people who did this experiment, weighed the bag before putting it in the water for 24 hours and then weighed it the day after. And every bag we weighed on day number two weighed more than it did the day before. And the reason it did that was the water in the beaker actually went into the cell through the pores in this plastic uh, and accumulated in here and actually made the bag or the cell weigh more. And the bags accumulated maybe a gram or a gram and a half worth of water in the 24 hours. And that makes sense because water through the process of osmosis goes from a hypotonic situation, in other words the beaker where there is very little dissolved in the water, to a hypertonic situation where there's a lot dissolved in the water. Remember, water always flows from the hypotonic area to the hypertonic area. Um, and that's why the bag took on water. Now, if the bag was the hypotonic area with not so much in it, and the water we had put it in was hypertonic, then the bag would have lost water because that's the way the movement or diffusion of water works, always moving towards the hypertonic environment. So when this cell was placed in the water for 24 hours, it actually gained weight because the water was moving towards uh, the inside of the cell or the inside of the bag, which is hypertonic. So to summarize, um, iodine went into the cell, Water also went into the cell. The glucose came out of the cell into its environment, into the beaker water. And the fourth ingredient here, which is the starch, uh, actually didn't go anywhere. It stayed in the bag. And that kind of makes sense because starch is a very large molecule. And so it didn't go anywhere because the holes in the bag or in our sim uh, uh, simulated cell are not large enough to allow the starch to go through. So I think that's enough information for you to evaluate the questions for the mini lab. Uh, make sure you find me and ask me any questions if you have them.